Hi and welcome, Dr. Luigi here. Today we will be talking about the physiology of cardiac regulation, specifically the autonomic control of heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output. Before we dive in, for those who are not familiar, the vagus nerve represents the main nerve of the parasympathetic nerve system. Essentially, parasympathetic and vagal are two terms that refer to the same branch of the autonomic nerve system. Ok, now let's start talking about autonomic cardiac control. The cardiac activity includes the heart rate, the stroke volume and the cardiac output. The heart rate is the number of times that the heart beats every minute. The stroke volume is the amount of blood ejected each heartbeat and the cardiac output is the total amount of blood that the heart pumps each minute. So the cardiac output is calculated by multiplying the heart rate by the stroke volume. Let's see the resting values. At rest the heart beats about 70 times and the stroke volume is about 70 to 71 ml and the cardiac output is about 5 liters. The cardiac activity is controlled by the autonomic nerve system on a moment to moment basis. This is important because allows to meet the metabolic demand placed on the body. This is achieved by fine tune regulation of sympathetic and parasympathetic activity on the heart. Now, if the autonomic control was removed, for instance by cutting the nerve, the heart would still contract rhythmically at about 100-110 beats per minute. This is called intrinsic heart rate. However, this would be detrimental because it would eliminate the neuromodulation and as a result there will be a mismatch between the cardiac activity and metabolic demand with unnecessary stress placed on the heart and also waste of energy. So how autonomic cardiac control is achieved? Well, this is achieved by increasing or decreasing the heart rate and cardiac contractility, which mostly depend on the sympathovagal balance. Specifically, the vagal nerve releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine that decreases heart rate and cardiac contractility, while the sympathetic nerve releases the neurotransmitter noradrenaline, also known as norepinephrine, which increases the heart rate and cardiac contractility. So the overall cardiac activity depends on both parasympathetic and sympathetic influences on the heart. For instance, in the transition from lay down to sitting, standing and then walking, there is a progressive decrease in vagal outflow on the heart and if the physical activity increases further, for example to jogging or running, there is a progressive increase in sympathetic outflow. Thus the cardiac activity is increased or decreased on a moment to moment basis by vagal and sympathetic outflow on the heart in order to meet the physical demand. So what the cardiac sympathovagal balance aims to achieve? Essentially, by increasing the heart rate and cardiac contractility, there is also an increase in cardiac output, while by decreasing the heart rate and cardiac contractility, there is also a decrease in cardiac output. For instance, if you are sitting, the demand for oxygen and nutrient delivery and also waste product removal is low, requiring a comparatively smaller cardiac output. 
Conversely, if you are running, the demand for oxygen and nutrient delivery and waste product removal is very high, requiring a comparatively larger cardiac output. So this mechanism ensures that cardiac output regulation is reflecting the physical demand and consequently allowing normal physiological function without stressing the heart unnecessarily and also preventing waste of energy. Ok, in this video we have seen the physiological mechanisms of autonomic cardiovascular control. Thanks for watching and make it a great day!